In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful day, Lord. We thank you for your presence in this place. Yet another day to learn more and more about your truths. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. You are our helper. The way you teach us, nobody can teach us. The way you guide us, nobody can guide us. Take complete authority of this entire session. Take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords. You think through my mind. You speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken over here pierce the hearts of those who are listening. And I bind every spirit of distraction, disturbance, unbelief that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you leave this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders, and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay. So, yesterday we were learning about how to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19 onwards. Yes. Can someone please read verses 11 and 12? Said, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of gentle stillness and a still small voice. Praise, Praise God. Okay. So, this was a time, okay, I'll give you a background to what we are learning. This was a time where Elijah, okay, he had won victory, okay? And after that, you know, Jezebel, she sent a threat through a messenger saying that whatever you did with my prophets, if I don't do the same things with you, then, you know... Let me change my, let my gods do the same thing to me. So what had happened was Elijah had challenged the prophets of Baal, the pagan god, you know, they had, uh, he had, uh, you know, challenged them because the Israelites were in disobedience and they were in two minds, which got to follow. So to prove that he challenged the prophets of Baal to call fire. Okay. And both of them did the sacrifice. And the prophets of Baal, they nothing happened when they did it. Whereas when Elijah, you know, offered the sacrifice, the power of God came and that fire came and it killed all the prophets of Baal. So now because of that, Jezebel was very angry. And now she gave a threat to Elijah. Now, in spite of Elijah being a man of God, okay, he considered her words and that's why he was in fear. He went into a place of depression, okay? And that's why he was running away. And on this way, while he was running away, the word of the Lord came unto him and he said, that is the word of the Lord said unto Elijah, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. So he's giving instructions to go and stand on the mount before the Lord. That means the place where Elijah was instructed to stand, okay, he was expecting God. And behold, the Lord passed by. Now the scripture says, and behold, the Lord passed by. And after that, there are few instances that happen as the Lord passes by. The first thing that happens is, a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in 
pieces, the rocks before the Lord. So can you imagine, okay, Elijah is asked to go in a mountain and wait for the presence of the Lord. And the winds go so fast, the strong winds go so fast that the mountains, okay, they, the rocks around the mountains is broken into pieces before the Lord. But what is the next point that says, but the Lord was not in the wind. Okay. So thinking about God, how magnificent he is, anybody would think, okay, the Lord is here and that's why this mountain is breaking like this. Correct? Hello? Yes. Okay. Then the second point comes after the wind, an earthquake. So all of you all know what is an earthquake, where the land divides, you know, breaks into two, nearly. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And then after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound, gentle stillness, and a still, small voice. So three things, the winds, the earthquake, the fire, okay? When all these things happen, okay, anybody can be, you know, moved by that and say, okay, the presence of God is here. But in reality, the presence of God was in none of the about three, but the presence of God was in a still small voice. Now, my question to you is, how did Elijah recognize that the voice of God is in the still small voice? Can anyone tell me? He was sensitive to the voice of God. Yes, he was sensitive to the voice of God. That means that sensitivity comes when I have an intimate relationship with the Lord. No matter, you know, whatever comes in between the distractions, I will be able to recognize that the voice of God is speaking to me right now. So what I understood from this is, okay, whatever happened, okay, the winds blowing, the earthquake, the fire, were those all natural experiences or supernatural experiences? Natural. natural. Who says natural? I okay. say. I okay. Say. God. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. See what it means. What I was trying to get to know, get to is, you know, the winds breaking. All these things are not normal things, right? It's like it's not something that should happen daily. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So when, when Elijah was expecting the Lord, could these things, what he saw, could it make him, you know, think that God is in any of these three things? No. Why? God, Why, sorry? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, question is very tricky. Okay, fine. No, <laughs> what I was trying to say was, okay, now, anybody, say if we were not rooted in the word, we didn't have a relationship with the Lord. And if I'm standing, okay, and I'm seeing earthquake falling, this is happening, fire is coming, then won't it take much time for me to think, okay, this all means, you know, God is nearby. The presence of God is right here. Correct? Yeah. 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 But... Elijah could recognize that the Lord's voice was a, st a still small voice. And what happened when Elijah heard the voice? He wrapped his face in his mantle because he recognized it is the presence of God. That's exactly what happens when you and I are rooted in the word of God. That is when we will be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We will be able to recognize the voice. All these things, 
you know, magnificent things of earthquake, fire. They represent, you know, supernatural experiences. As in, like mm. you getting a vision, you getting a dream. I'm not saying visions and dreams are not biblical. They are biblical. And as believers mm -hmm. in our life, we can experience supernatural things. But we should not pursue those things. Correct. Science and supernatural things should not be your focus. Because if you're going to focus on that, it won't take much time for you to get drifted away from the word. Correct? Correct. Praise God. And that's what I understood from this. You know, the Lord was telling me this, that Elijah was so sensitive to the voice of God because of that relationship because of spending time with the Lord. And in the same way, you and I too can spend time. See, the difference is, you may say in the old covenant, you may see, you know, the Lord speaking to them, the word of the Lord coming to them. Why? Because at that time, there was no written word. I will show you the scriptures. Okay. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. I'll put it in TPT translation. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Would someone like to read this? Throughout our, Throughout our history. Yes, sister, continue. Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment of a time building one truth upon another. So if you see the scripture, it says, throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by his prophets in many different ways. So it was very natural for them to, you know, encounter God speak to him face to face in the old covenant through different ways. The revelation he gave them was only at a fragment at a time. That means he would tell them the truth, but not the entire truth. One truth at a time. And that's why the coming of Jesus was prophesied so many times in different ways through different prophets. Correct? Through yes. Isaiah. Yes. Through different things. Okay. Praise God. Building one truth upon the other. That was the way God would communicate in the old covenant. But today, he speaks to us through the word of God. That's why the word of God has to be the final authority in my life. Only when I know the word, that is when I will be able to discern. Okay, Holy Spirit is speaking to me. And that's why, you know, the physical encounters will not move me. Because what happens is, physical encounters, it doesn't take much time for a person to get drifted away from the word and start seeking those encounters. Mm. But when I understand that, you know, the word of God should be the final authority in my life and not what I encounter, what I experience. That is when I am holding on strong on the foundation of the truth. That is the word of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you. That was the first thing I wanted to tell. Another yes. thing I wanted to tell, a small, still voice. Okay? That's one of the ways how God communicates to us. A small, still voice. That small, still voice, is it easy to hear if my mind is clouded? No. No, no, no. Not at all, correct? Not at all. And that's why I have to pay attention. Okay? So let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 24. I'll just put this, yeah. Yeah. 
NLT version. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Can someone please read from 24? Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more. Praise God. So this scripture is saying, pay close attention to what you hear. That means right now we are hearing so many sounds. You're hearing my voice. You're hearing even, you know, the sounds around you. But not everything will take your attention. Only the one which you choose to pay attention to. Like, for example, right now, as I'm preaching, you know, the fan is moving. And that fan is also making a sound, okay? But because my mind is so focused on what I'm saying right now, I am not paid attention to the sound of the fan. And that's why I've neglected it. What I choose to pay attention, I will be more sensitive to it. And what I choose to neglect, my heart will be hardened to it. Are you understanding? Every moment in our life, okay, as we were learning previously, Holy Spirit is speaking to us. But the reason I'm not able to hear him is because my heart is hardened. My heart has become more sensitive to the voice of my body. For example, okay, in the morning, when we have to wake up, I'm talking about myself, okay? While I want to wake up, the body's voice is coming louder. I want to sleep. But from within, there is a voice telling you have to get up. It's morning. You know, it's time. You have to get up. So, one is coming from my natural senses. One is coming from my spiritual senses. Now, it is up to me to decide whose voice am I going to be more sensitive to? The spiritual sense or the natural sense? And what I choose to consider, that will become my focus. That means if I'm sensitive to that voice that is telling me it's time for you to get up, that means I have paid attention to the voice of God. Isn't it normally when you wake up in the morning, it's like your body speaks more louder than the Holy Spirit's voice. Yes. I yes. want to sleep. Yes, it's not, many times. not just that, even after you wake up also, First thing, the stomach will start speaking. I want food. Give me food. Correct? <laughs> Praise God. Practically, we all are learning. We mm -hmm. think, you know, we think Holy Spirit speaks to us only related to spiritual things. No. He speaks to us even when it comes to the, you know, the ordinary things, simple things we do in the morning. And that's why, you know, uh, why people, you know, why it is said that fasting is recommended, that fasting is not for you to get power or anything. Fasting only helps you to remove your focus from yourself onto God. And when a person is feeding himself with the word of God and fasting, okay, that is when it is a true fast. Otherwise, it is only dieting. The reason why, you know, people would go on fast is to become more spiritually sensitive. Because when your body is demanding its own thing, its own desire, I want to eat, you're telling your body, no, I'm not going to give you what you are asking. You don't dictate me. You have to submit to the word of God. Praise God. God. Where you learn to take authority, where you learn to become spiritually sensitive. Because if you have noticed, okay, when a person is tired, when a person is hungry, he is not at his best. Right? Correct. Yes. Correct. He's not at his best. Even the most patient person 
when he's hungry when he's tired he'll get irritated mm-hmm. yes yeah. because the body is speaking loudly and this flesh this body this natural senses has become the ruler has become the dictator in our life but it is time we learn to crucify the flesh by submitting to the word of god it can't happen by your will power it is an everyday practice where you are being led by the holy spirit to become more sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit the truth is holy spirit is speaking to us right from the morning the wake up call the instruction to get up from your bed itself is the voice of the holy spirit but how many of us consider that right say if i sleep late in the night and i want to get up early and i know i sleep very late but yet i can also wake me up at the same time and it does i do yeah. get up absolutely he does and that is the holy spirit who's waking you up because yes. even i have done that because we we want to hear the voice of the holy spirit no so that's why i gave this example it is holy spirit telling us to wake up and sister like exactly same time the holy spirit wakes us wakes us up 3:30 yes. yeah, or 4 o'clock same time it's like we can hear some birds uh, noise or something or the other comes but the same time holy spirit wakes us up praise, praise god for that praise god thank yes. you jesus thank you so faithful more than us yes and that's why the scripture saying pay close attention to what you hear the closer you listen the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more the more attention i pay the more i'm sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit in the little things of my life the more clearly i will be able to hear his voice because the scripture is saying no the closer you listen the more understanding you will be given and you will receive even more Thank praise you. god praise god thank you jesus thank you beautiful anybody wants to add something sister can i say something yes sister go ahead sister yesterday what happened it was raining very badly sister here so like while coming home with my son while riding the bike like sister so in the middle only like strong winds and heavy rain like one small branch came in front of my bike actually nothing happened sister i was saved and just before that like two minutes like i started one minute one minute one second before like i started in uh, tongues and i had called holy spirit and i was just uh, continue in tongues and holy spirit i was just calling and that, that time only that branch came in just it came down small branch and it it actually did not hit me nothing happened like i was completely protected and saved so like the angels were there like in charge of me and like all the people started looking are this girl was miraculously saved praise god for that i so i just want to thank the lord for the great miracle praise god praise yes. god thank yes holy Jesus. spirit instructs us he will tell you you know mm-hmm. uh, do this or don't do this particularly it will come as a strong voice from within as yesterday we were learning right romans 8:16 says the holy spirit bears witness in our spirit and that voice will come from inside you cannot and at that point when holy spirit speaks to you you may not see any physical evidence to support that voice that is speaking to you but if you are patient enough and you go as per his instructions you will see that he is guiding you in the right track praise god praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus praise god okay anybody else wants to ask anything or add anything you know earlier i used to always say is before i get a very good relationship with god before i always to say jesus help me jesus help me it was my for any uh, little small small problem whatever any situation this but now i don't know how i switched over to always say holy spirit help immediately i just call on the holy the holy spirit help and it's so beautiful like you know uh, the the very fact that i said it i know it's done my work is done and it really helps he gives direction like you said he guides he counsels he does everything and but 
my i don't know when i switched over to say holy spirit help not like earlier jesus please help me i used to literally beg jesus please help me but now i only just say holy spirit help help me praise god because of your relationship sister praise thank god. you jesus praise god okay if there's nothing more then we can close for today and we can continue tomorrow thank you jesus would anyone like to make the thanksgiving prayer for today okay i'll make yes sister marcela thank you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen thank you abba father thank you lord jesus thank you holy spirit lord holy spirit lord i just want to thank you and praise you for this beautiful teaching speaking to us and reminding us once again to be very sensitive to hearing your still voice your small whisper also and thank you lord jesus for bringing us here to listen to your word you are drawing us day by day you want us to drink that water from the well thank you lord jesus we are being filled uh, as we are being filled help us to go out and reach out to the others also the same spirit that you blessed us with that we can share the good news to the others around us and we can see in every situation of jesus we can see your hand you're working wonderfully in each one of us the dry more and more people to your word lord jesus and let that word be embodied in the good soil of our heart so that we can at any point of time lord jesus we know that your presence is there with us and no evil nothing can disturb us no take us away from your from you because lord jesus i know and i know that you're holding our hands let this let us not leave your hand because it is that relationship the connection that we have let us not be cut off by the things around us seeing the thing let us always be focusing on you and your word lord jesus and i thank you holy spirit lord for always being with us guiding us and instructing us teaching us and i thank you for the session that every day we are receiving and throughout the day we can meditate on knowing what is taught to right now that still voice we want to hear the whole day long I make this prayer above father in the name of your son jesus amen 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 thank, amen. You. thank you sister thank you all for joining in see you all tomorrow bye bye god bless see you all tomorrow